Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18. I'm going to read 18 and 19. These are very familiar passages of Scripture. 19 more than 18, but, but they go together, so I want to look at them together. It says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I want to talk to you a little while about new seasons and new paths. Road, not too far, and we started a new house. Now listen, if this is upsetting you, just hang on because it's going to get worse before it gets better. And I kept hearing, well, but this so-and-so, this one needs help. 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 Now, listen to what I'm saying. Before it's over, something happened there in that particular spot, and there was a falling out, and all this stuff took place. And the next thing you know, everybody scattered. So now Harvest doesn't have them. Nobody's got them. Are you listening? So... I'm in town about a month ago, and I run into one of those people that I haven't seen. It's been six, seven years, and so I'm talking to them, and I said, man, I miss you. Won't, you. won't you come and see us? And he starts talking to me. He said, I'm Pastor, me and I'm not, I got to be careful. Me and my wife got a divorce. We haven't been in church in years. I hear what I'm saying. What ends up happening so many times is the enemy gets in between us instead of us being unified and powerful, we start getting, how do I say it? I got a better idea. I got a better idea. I got a better idea. Are you with me? The biggest enemy in the kingdom of God is disunity. You ever hear me? God never intended it. He doesn't want it. Now, listen, I'm not talking about, listen, we, we've, how do I say this? We have planted or, or, or blessed several ministries going out of here. I'm not talking about expansion of the kingdom. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about getting disgruntled and fighting within the kingdom. Do you understand the difference? Well, I hope so, because it matters. There's no way to grow the kingdom by shooting inside the tent. You can only grow the kingdom by expanding the kingdom. Are you with me? You expand the kingdom. When the kingdom's expanded, you know it because it's blessed. Are you with me? It's sent out and blessed. Amen? That's what God does to build. What the enemy does to tear down is when somebody decides, hey, I can just do this better. I don't need a covering or I don't need whatever it is I need or whatever you're providing, so I'm just going to do my own thing. Now, listen to me closely. There's a reason why I'm saying this. To move forward, we've been preaching for weeks now about pressing forward, pressing forward, pressing forward. I argued with God over this little spot here in my notes most of the morning. As I said, God, I don't, I don't care. And this is going to sound bad. I don't. After all these years of ministry, you know, anything, obviously, if someone um, who used to be my friend is not my friend anymore, obviously, that hurts. But, but I'm, not, um, I'm not worried anymore about who does what and when. Okay? Does that make sense? What I am concerned about is that we unify moving forward. Are you playing? Am I being plain? Amen. Yeah, you can clap. It's okay. I know, listen, I got your attention and I meant to. I want you to hear this. What the new season is not always this, um, it's like, wow, there it is. And I'll show it to you in this scripture if you'll stick with me, if you'll let me. Okay, let's go to 18 first. I got to see, I got I got to get you, you got to see this. The beginning, the beginning of this, 
Hey, I love babies. Babies don't bother me not. Amen? I want 50 of them. More. Karen's like, I don't mean we got to have them. They got to have them. They're all childbearing age. Y'all get busy. Amen. More than one way to grow a church. Amen. I know. I used to, man, I said under a preacher one time, he hated when babies started crying. I just love it. I'm just like, praise God, we're not old. Amen. It's exciting to me. I love it. It's a blessing. Now watch. Um, we like... Lord, help me say this without being super offensive. We love the behold, I'm doing a new thing. What we don't love so much is remember ye not the former things. When I grew up, we had a song, give me that old time religion, give me that old time. Anybody remember that? It was good enough for apparently everybody in the family, granny, grandpa, mom, and daddy. Good enough for all of them. Now, I didn't particularly like old religion. I don't like new religion. I don't really like religion at all. It messes with people. Amen? It just does. And it doesn't matter what kind of religion it is. It's just religion. Amen? But what happens is, is that we get stuck. Now, get, now, listen, let me just put this out there, and I'll stop right here. The reality is that there are some things I'd like to return to, like morals. <laughs> That'd be good. Morality would be great. Are you listening? There are some things that I would like to return to, like, I don't know, taking some of this junk off television. I mean, I'm watching stuff. You used to have to go see a rated R movie, and it just comes across my TV all day long, right? Not that I ever went to a rated R movie, mind you. Uh oh. When I was 14, you'd go to hell over seeing a G rated movie in the wrong place. Amen? So I'm, pre I'm pretty thankful now that you can get by with a little more. Watch this. But it wouldn't hurt to return to some real morality. Amen? So I understand that sentiment. Here's the problem. When we get so hung up with what used to be, we can never reach out to what's going to be. Especially in church, it happens all the time. Does anybody, and maybe most of you guys are probably too young, I don't know, but I remember when we started switching to worship songs from the hymnals. Does anybody in here remember that? Yeah, you went to church, you remember that? Oh, Lord, I thought Jesus was coming back any minute. He had to be. He's going to save us all. Watch. <laughs> ah, singing off the wall. Now they're just singing off the wall. Give me one of them good old red books any day. I don't sing it off the wall. Well, listen, I've heard you sing, dude. You sing off the wall every time I hear you. But it was this monumental fight. We can't do that. This is sacred. Are you listening? Listen, if you weren't in that fight, you don't know, but as a worship leader, I dealt with it a lot. Why are you going to sing one of the old songs? Well, I don't know. You still know one? It's amazing to me. Amazing to me how people will hang on to old religious things. Yeah? Now watch. God says in order to have a new thing spring forward, if you're going to do that, you're going to have to not remember the former thing. Let me give you a definition. I'll help you. The word here for not is zakar. It is a Hebrew word, means to mark, to be mindful of, or to recall, to literally make a memorial unto. Quit memorializing what used to be. Now listen, here's I, it's been 
a couple before COVID, I was at a, I went and spoke at a church. Great place, great people. Still trying to um, copy Pensacola. You understand? Still even singing some of those songs we sung in the 90s that come out of there. Still doing the same things, trying to look like that looked 20, what now, five years ago? And I talked to the pastor when it was over, and I said, man, you know, you're great people, whatever. But you could tell it was a form of godliness. It literally was a form. It became what used to be the fresh and powerful thing became a ritual to just try to, because they longed for the old glory and the way people would fall in the floor and shake and they longed for all these things. And now God had moved on and they were spending all their time trying to be Pensacola again. Literally, he looked at me and he said, I just keep thinking God's going to bring it back. I said, bring what back? What are you talking about? Well, you know, the move of God we had in the 90s. And he's, listen, he's a friend of mine. I said, listen to me. You don't need God to bring something back. God has something brand new for you, for this house, for this church. You've got something fresh to give you, you need to find out what it is that God wants this place to look like. Because I can tell you what he doesn't want it to look like. He doesn't want it to look like Pensacola in 1997. He wants it to, I about said the place. He wants it to look like this church now. Amen? So God says if you're going to get something new, you can't cling to, you can't memorialize what used to be. All right? Hang on. Just stay with me. I'm still going. The former things, that I took every word of this and just broke it down, and I want you to stay with me. Rishon is the, is the Hebrew word for the former things. It is the first in time or the first time it happened. I've told this before, but it's so funny, and i got to tell it again because it's hilarious, and it makes some sense. I, got a, I had a pastor friend that went to heaven many, many years ago. He used to be an evangelist. He was a spirit-filled, power-packed, little five-foot-six preacher. It was amazing. I mean, when he got to preaching, people get to shout and dance. And he was one of those. But he was one of those rare few back in the day that not only preached a house on fire, he didn't bring hell down on your head every day. That was a rarity back then. Amen? People thought better, the best preaching was when he, you know, they skin you alive and send you out in the street. Amen? <laughs> I, I got to quit saying stuff like this. It's like Darren and Rick. And these guys are the only, apparently, Miss Tiffany and Karen, the only body understands me. It used to be a deal. Freedom's good. You should thank God every day you got it. Amen? <laughs> this young man, back then he was young, he loved to preach. And, and, and I don't know if you remember this. Again, I'm telling my age, but used to all stages had rails on them. And all the little Sim to God churches I grew up in, and even 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 Pentecost Church of God's, so they all had like banisters here, rails. I guess I don't know. We were pretty. We flop around, couldn't flop off the stage. I never fully understood it, but you had one way to get up there, right through the middle, right. So it had rails on both sides. And he said, "I was preaching this revival, man. We're going." He said, "I'm telling you." He said, "He said, brother, these people were so dead." He said, I don't even know how to explain to you how dead they were. He said, I was screaming and shouting and hucking and bucking and sweating, and I'd stop and look at them, and they'd just be. He said, I couldn't figure out. You know, you tell yourself as a preacher, and trust me, I know this. You tell yourself as a preacher, they're just soaking it in. <laughs> Probably not. It's probably not what's going on at all. And he said, at some point, he said, the Holy Spirit said, jump that banister. He said, I said, no, I ain't going to, God. I'm 5'6". That banister is three foot tall. 
And he said, the Holy Spirit said, jump that banister. He said, I come, every time I come by it, the Holy Spirit said, jump that banister. I ain't doing it, God. Jump that banister. I'm going to end this thing now. And he said, about that time, he said, I went, wow, like that, and jumped. And he said, Co- cleared the whole thing, landed on both feet on the other side. When I did, the place just erupted. People went to shouting and yelling. He said, the Holy Ghost came down. He said, for the next three nights, man, I preached a house of fire. They were shouting and yelling. And he said, I was supposed to close on Wednesday night. We got to Wednesday night, and the preacher was loving it, and I was loving it. He said, let's just extend it through Sunday. He said, you know, you really ought to check with God on those kind of things, but we were excited. Trust me, I used to be an evangelist almost everywhere I went. Let's just go another few nights. Nope. I had a story in my head. I wasn't doing it. And he said about, so we went, we extended through Sunday. And he said about Saturday night, that place was just as dead as it was the Sunday that I started. They all just sitting there. He said, so I thought I'd just jump that banister again. Um, He said, if you're five foot six, you've got a three foot banister. You need to make sure the Holy Ghost is in it. He obviously wasn't. I caught both my toes on top of that banister, flipped upside down, landed flat on my back. And he said, you could hear a pin drop. He said, and then somebody in the back started laughing. He said, I got them free, but it wasn't the way I wanted to get them free. He said, I stood up and dismissed and told him, your pastor will be preaching for you tomorrow morning. We get so set in our ways, we think there's only one way God can move. And if it happened a certain way before, surely that's the way it'll happen again. I've noticed in Pentecostal circles, it's usually about, and listen, I got the same tendencies because, listen, if you do something and it works, it's like, well, I'm in trouble again. Amen. But we, I hear stories. Well, one time we fasted like this, and we didn't eat this, and we didn't eat that, but we did drink that, and we fasted for this many days, and we took communion at 12.03 every day, and the Holy Ghost came down. So that must be the formula. Because we get stuck. And God said, if you want to see a new thing, I need you to stop doing that. If you do something and it's supernatural and I move in a supernatural way, that's great. But don't put me in your box. Are you with me? Hang on. I'm not through. Maybe I should be, but I ain't. Stay with me. Three, neither consider, neither consider the things of old. Isn't that the same as not remembering? Kind of, until you look into the Hebrew and it says, watch this. It's the word for ranking something. So God's not just not telling, not, God's not just saying, don't, don't keep going back to that same old thing. I need you to quit ranking these things. Oh, man, we used to have church. Are you listening? I'm going to tell you something. I remember one time when the Spirit of God moved in 1997. It was so powerful, I got stuck to the stage for over two hours. The anointing was so heavy, I couldn't lift my arms. I couldn't lift my legs. I just laid there. I tried to give up, get up at least a half a dozen times and couldn't do it. And I remember thinking then, well, where do we go from here? God, this is the heaviest thing. I, this is the most powerful thing I've ever felt. What am I going to do now? It's kind of like shooting that 200-inch buck, Greg. What are you going to do now? Where are you going to go from there? Well, I'm going to go back out looking for a 150 next year if I have to. Because here's what I come to experience or come to realize. A few years later, I'm out at Azusa Street 
celebration, me and Wendell and Joy. And I got in Carlos Anacondia's line. And I got about 20 feet from that guy. And he went, Jesus. And it was like electric shock hit me right there in the chest. Boom. Sent me backwards on my back. Now I wasn't pinned to the floor. I was thrown across the floor. And I'm like, okay. What are you going to do next? Here's the problem is a lot of us will run around chasing. Lord, help me because I, I'm really not trying to be offensive this morning. I am trying hard to pull us together. People make religions of manifestations. I'm <laughs> there was a deal for a while, and it's still kind of there, but there was a deal for a while where everybody's laughing in the spirit. Anybody in church when that was happening? You remember that? They'd anoint water and have them drink the holy water, and everybody start laughing. Okay? Now, listen, you may think it's weird, whatever. I've seen some real people who really didn't play games end up on the floor laughing hysterically in the Holy Ghost, okay? So I'm not making fun of anything, all right? I'm the last one to tell you God can't work a certain way. He's proved me wrong every time I've decided that, all right? He gets to use who he wants and work the way he wants. Amen? Now watch. We, I told you I loved it. Can't be too many of them. Just can't be. We, oh my gosh, Lord help me. For a few years there, I'm on the evangelistic field when that wave really was hitting. And everywhere I go, you could see them coming. Here they come. That's those two ladies. Here they come. I've seen them at every church, not those exact ones, but I've seen them everywhere. Preacher, do you like to laugh in the spirit? I just think you have to laugh in the spirit to have a real experience with God. I, uh, I oof, how do I say it? I just keep getting myself in trouble this morning, but I'm going to try not to. Every time somebody would do that, I'd say, you know what? I believe in it. I've seen it. I know it's powerful. It's just like people getting slain in the spirit. I've seen God flatten people. I mean, knock them on their hind end. But unfortunately, I've probably seen more CDs than I've seen reality. But it's a CD. It's a courtesy draw. I'll never forget it. When I first came here, <laughs> Wendell, Wendell and I got in an argument about people hitting the floor. He, I said, we're going to have catchers. Well, Brother Todd, if it's really the Holy Ghost, you don't need catchers. I said, I would agree, Wendell, but do you know which ones they are? He said, I never thought about that. Because <laughs> the reality is, is that people just do religious things. Yeah. So I'm on the field and I'm watching this thing. And if people are wanting, you know, they're wanting, the pressure is huge to, you know, get a picture of water and set it on the altar, and pray over it and what, you know, and I'm just like, God, I can't do this. I can't do it. If you tell me to do it, I will, but I'm not going to, I'm not trying to get on the bandwagon just really want you to do what you do. Amen? And guess what? I never got involved in this. I've, there's been a couple of times, like twice in my life, that I was under the power of the Holy Spirit laughing. Okay? But it wasn't uncontrollable. Because I have a belief that anything you can't control probably isn't God. Are you listening? If, if the Holy Spirit is a still, small voice in a gentleman, like the Bible says he is, how in the world then 
This is why people don't get filled with the baptism more often. They're, wanting, they're looking for God to grab their tongue and start speaking, speaking for them. You have to be a willing participant for God to do something in your life. Amen? All right, stay with me. I'm, I really am about done. I'm going to like point four. I got 10 of them. No, I got 12 of them. So we're not doing all those today. And everybody said, yay! frowning. The things of old. Old is a Hebrew word for those that went before. So let me show you, let me just right here, I'm going to tell you what that verse 18 says. So in order to brace new things God has for us, he wants us to stop memorializing when it happened, how it happened, and who it happened with. Let me say it again. When it happened, how it happened, and who it happened with. Man, I remember when Brother So-and-so came that time. We had people everywhere. Okay. I believe that. I even believe it was a powerful time. The first time Perry Stone came here, there was 813 people in this building, not this new sanctuary, in the old building. Stacked three, four deep on that port on those on those catwalks from front to back. It was the grace of God they stood up there. Every seat full, everywhere, and over a hundred in overflow next door. Over a hundred in overflow next door watching closed circuit television. That was a powerful night, church. But I don't have Terry Stone when I have him now just so I can try to draw a big crowd, hoping that happens again. Are you listening? We're looking for a fresh wave of the Holy Spirit. We want a fresh move of the Holy Spirit. We want a new thing. Amen? Now, I can't get to it this morning. I'll just let you chew on this and I'll dismiss. Later on, it tells you about it will spring forth. And I've heard a lot of preaching about this. And I'll go into de detail with it, maybe Lord willing, next week. But I've heard a lot, I mean a lot of preaching on this. And when he says spring forth, they're like, spring forth. It's going to be a powerful thing. It's actually not what he says at all. He uses the word for sprout. The word spring there is the Hebrew word for sprout. It will sprout. You've heard the story, you probably watched the video of John Kilpatrick talking about the Father's Day service that started the Pensacola outpouring. If you've ever watched that service and spent any time in Arkansas in a Pentecostal church growing up, you've seen that a million times. Watch it. Pull it up and watch it. I've seen it a million. There was nothing that happened in that service that I haven't seen all my growing up. In fact, almost every weekend for a while. Yet John, the pastor, saw a sprout. Are you listening? And by seeing that sprout, God is doing a new thing. 